Mission Street Club for February of 2023. And as you can see, our topic today is President's Day. We will be celebrating President's Day next Monday, and I'm very excited about it. I hope you are too. Um, also, if you don't know, uh, the library will be hosting the, its annual quiz bowl, the first one back since COVID, on February the 25th at 9 a.m. So I hope to see you all there. So getting back to President's Day. President's Day is a federal holiday. It's is a federal holiday celebrated on the third Monday in February, and uh, President's Day first was celebrated simply as George Washington's birthday, which is on February twenty second. Um, later on. As part of the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, it was moved to where it is now, which is the third Monday of the month. And it was fitting because not only is President George Washington's birthday in February, Lincoln's birthday is February 12th. Um, there are two other presidents born in February. Uh, one who had the shortest presidency at only one month, so he's not really the person we're celebrating so much as the others. And Ronald Reagan is the other president born in February, and whether you celebrate him or not depends on which party you belong to. Should be able to hit the arrow keys. So first of all, did you know that John Adams and Thomas Jefferson were the only two presidents to sign the Declaration of Independence, and they both died on July 4th, 1826, which if you do the math, is the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Hey Jordan, would you be able to speak a little bit louder? We have some viewers saying they can't hear super well. All right. So now let's move on to presidents who served in wars. So the first war is, is that we're mentioning, of course, is the American Revolution. And the presidents who served in that were Washington, George Washington, James Madison, James Monroe, and Andrew Jackson. Now, James Madison is a little bit uh, of the odd man that group because he served as a colonel in what would later become the Virginia uh, National Guard um, and he served for a very brief time in 1775 which is the year the American Revolution began but he was soon dismissed due to poor health. In the War of 1812 it was Andrew Jackson who by the way, when he served in the American Revolution, he was only about 13 or 14 years old. Uh, then William Henry Harrison also served in the War of 1812. John Tyler, Zachary Taylor, and James Buchanan served in that war as well. For the Mexican-American War, it was Zachary Taylor, Franklin Pierce, and Ulysses Grant. For the Civil War, it was every president from Andrew Johnson to William McKinley, with the exception of Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland did not serve in that war because uh, there was a rule at the time that if you were drafted, you could pay someone else to serve in your place, and Grover Cleveland opted for that option. The only Spanish-American War veteran was a president is Theodore Roosevelt. The only World War I combat veteran is, you can see him here, Harry S. Truman. Dwight D. Eisenhower also served in that war, but not in a combat role. His role was in training troops to go overseas. 
Um, for World War II, that's every president from Dwight Eisenhower to George H.W. Bush. Jimmy Carter uh, was in the Naval Academy at the time, so he did not see combat uh, because he didn't graduate until after the war was over. And uh, Ronald Reagan also did not see combat due to poor eyesight. And Reagan and Eisenhower were the only two that served in that war that served in the Army. The rest of them, uh, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, uh, Carter, and Bush um, were all in the Navy instead. And you can see a picture of uh, John F. Kennedy in his Navy full uniform there. And George H.W. Bush was a Navy pilot. And you can see him in his pilot gear right there. So now, which presidents are on the money? So you probably know that George Washington is on the quarter and on the $1 bill. Uh, Thomas Jefferson is on the nickel and on the lesser known $2 bill, one we don't use a whole lot. Uh, Jackson is on the 20, although there's been talk about replacing him on the 20. Uh, Lincoln is currently on the penny and the five dollar bill. Grant is on the fifty, and Roosevelt is on the dime. So those are the ones on the common currency, the currency we use every day. But to continue on, James Madison is on the five thousand dollar bill. Grover Cleveland is on the one thousand dollar bill. William McKinley is on the 500, and Woodrow Wilson is on the $100,000 bill. So if you have a, some money with Woodrow Wilson's portrait on it, you're in good shape. Uh, these were actually only printed uh, for use by the Treasury Department. And these others here were started to be the Treasury Department started to take them out of circulation beginning in 1969. So coins we don't use, and by the way, uh, down here we have, like we have Benjamin Franklin on the 100, a non-president who was on the higher currency, and that is Salmon P. Chase, who, uh, Samuel P. Chase was the Secretary of the Treasury during the Civil War and became the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court at the end of the war. So moving on to some of the lesser known coins, you've got Eisenhower on the dollar coin, which was came out in the years after his death. They don't use these anymore. And uh, I mean, you can still use it, but they don't make those anymore. Uh, they made coins with each president's picture on it for dollar coins. Uh, but those have never really caught on. And uh, Kennedy on the half dollar, you may recognize that. So which presidents were related? Well, first of all, the two father-son pairs were John Adams and his son, John Quincy Adams, and George Herbert Walker Bush and his son, George Walker Bush. So the first set of father-son presidents, they added a middle name. The second one, they took away a middle name. There was also a grandfather and grandson to be president, so it skipped the generation in the Harrison family. It went from William Henry Harrison to Benjamin Harrison many years later. Um, in fact, uh, one of the campaign slogan used for Benjamin Harrison was grandfather's hat fits. James Madison and Zachary Taylor were second cousins. Uh, and I'm not going to go all the way into seventh and eighth cousins and all that, or else we'd be here all day. 
but one of the more commonly known distant cousins who were president are the Roosevelt's. Um, the Roosevelt family had two branches. Um, one was the Hyde Park Roosevelt's, and one was the Oyster Bay Roosevelt's. So Theodore Roosevelt was from the Oyster Bay branch, and Franklin Roosevelt was from the Hyde Park branch, and they were fifth cousins. The only two presidents to have the same last name, where there's no known relation between the two, are Andrew Johnson and Lyndon Johnson. So now we're going to talk about presidents' favorite foods. Now this was one of the harder topics to research because uh, some sources would say one food, other sources would say another, and I think it's because just like us, presidents don't like to eat the same thing every time. So for example, uh, one source said that Eisenhower's favorite dessert was Prune Whip, another one said it was Million Dollar Fudge, and, but if you look on the Eisenhower Presidential Library's website, under hit a list of his favorite foods, both are mentioned. And Eisenhower also loved grilled steaks and uh, apparently made his own vegetable soup from his own recipe. Uh, so George Washington, our first president, did indeed love cherries. Um, he also loved walnuts. And According to this book, which I used in my research, this was my book from when I was a little kid, uh, my own personal book. Uh, some of the foods listed there were cream of peanut soup, uh, green beans with mushrooms, which sound really good to me, and uh, something that my grandfather liked, which was uh, mashed, cooked, mashed sweet potatoes with coconut. Uh, George Washington also loved freshly caught fish. Uh, they were easier for him to chew with his ivory dentures. He didn't have wooden dentures to dispel for a known myth, but ivory dentures. And uh, he also loved hoe cakes, which were like Pancakes, but made out of cornmeal instead of flour. He would like to eat like them with butter and honey. Thomas Jefferson is known for bringing European cuisine to America, and some of the popular items there are French fries, macaroni and cheese, and of course waffles. And uh, Sources conflicted on who was the first to have ice cream, whether it was Washington, Jefferson, or Madison. Uh, so it looks like Washington probably had it first since he was the first president, but Dolly Madison popularized it as the White House hostess because Thomas Jefferson's wife had died before becoming the first lady and she actually helped Thomas Jefferson host parties and before her husband became president. Andrew Jackson, one of his favorite foods, according to this book, one was turkey hash, and another one I found out he liked was leather bridges. Does anyone know what leather bridges are? Yeah. Yeah, what, what are leather bridges? So, it is a ruby bridges, so, there is a president, so there is no single about it, so it's a president. Well, so leather bridges in his time, in terms of food, meant green beans, and the way they would preserve them was they would take a needle and thread and swing the green beans up and dry them out, and then when they were ready to cook them, they would boil them in water with some meat, usually bacon or ham, and that was leather breeches. And another hearty frontier food that was enjoyed by two presidents, 
by both William Henry Harrison and James Northfield was squirrel meat. They loved it in stew or soup, especially. Uh, Andrew Johnson, uh, another North Carolina president like Andrew Jackson, his favorite food was Hopping John. Does anyone want to take a guess as to what that was? Frogs? No. That's a good guess. No, Hopping John was black-eyed peas, rice, chopped onions, and bacon uh, mixed together. Now, speaking of odd combinations to mix together, Hopping John doesn't sound too bad, but does anyone think they like cottage cheese and ketchup mixed together? <laughs> Probably you, yes. you like ketchup. Yes. <laughs> Well, maybe you'd get along with Richard Nixon because that was one of his favorite foods, was cottage cheese and ketchup mixed together. He also loved cottage cheese with fruit. And this is a picture of his lunch, the, either the day he resigned or the day before he resigned. Now, Ronald Reagan's favorite food was jelly beans. He loved jelly beans, especially jelly belly belly. Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, and he would keep drawers of them on his desk at the Oswald office, and he, he even kept drawers of them with him at meetings where he would uh, eat a little bit every now and then. So George H.W. Bush, the first George Bush to be president, hated broccoli. He preferred pork rinds with Tabasco. Once some farmers found out he hated broccoli, uh, they sent truckloads of broccoli to the White House. And he made a speech in which he said, uh, I don't like broccoli. I haven't liked it since I was a little kid and my mother made me eat it. And I'm the president of the United States and I'm not going to eat any more broccoli. So he was firmly in the anti-broccoli camp. His son, George H.W. Bush, loved pizza. And one of his favorite things was cheeseburger pizza. Pizza topped with cheeseburger toppings. Uh, another president who liked fast foods was Donald Trump. And he also loved steak. And a direct quote from our current president is, I'm Joe Biden and I love ice cream. And if you zoom in on this picture, you might see another famous person in the background. Does anybody see who it is? Do you know? I just think it's Barack Obama. He's getting ice cream. Yeah. Yes. Barack Obama's getting ice cream with Joe Biden in this picture. <laughs> and now we're going to look at presidents with a North Carolina connection. So the first one I want to talk about is James Madison. He's over there. And James Madison was from Virginia, not North Carolina, but his wife Dolly Madison was from North Carolina. And his presidency was probably more famous for having Dolly Madison as the first lady than it was for having him as president. Now, the three presidents where we claim North Carolina is their birthplace are Andrew Jackson, James K. Polk, and Andrew Johnson. Andrew Jackson was born in the Grass Homes, which is a region on the border of North and South Carolina. And North and South Carolina still argue over where he was born to this day. Um, but if you look him up in almost any book, it's going to say South Carolina. But he's still got the statue there in Raleigh. Uh, Jake, he was uh, so famous that the Jackson era was named after him. He was considered the first common man to be president. Whereas he did he eventually would have a plantation, but he didn't grow up on the plantation. He was born in a log cabin. Um, 
James K. Polk was the manifest destiny president, basically, where he got a lot of land from Mexico, like California, Colorado, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. So that he won that, he got that area after a war with Mexico. And Andrew Johnson was the president who became president because Abraham Lincoln got assassinated. Um, the one left here is Richard Nixon, who was not from North Carolina, but he did go to law school at Duke. Any Duke fans out there? Boo. <laughs> no one's going to claim that. Well, here's our next interesting fun fact. Uh, did you know that James Monroe is the only president with a foreign capital named after him? And that is Monrovia, which is the capital city of Liberia. That's because the country of Liberia was founded when there was a movement in the United States to take freed slaves and back to Africa. And that's how the country of Liberia was formed, and James Monroe was president at the time, and that's why Monrovia is named after him. And now it's the curse of Tippecanoe. Has anyone ever heard of the curse of Tippecanoe? You have? Yeah. Yeah? Where'd you, where'd you hear about it? I tried to use it, and they used it like, and then the doors were shut. So this is the president, so this is Abraham Lincoln, so he's the president. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln was one of the presidents who was affected by this curse. But we're, I'm a bit skeptical as to curses are real, real or not, but it is quite a coincidence. So William Henry Harrison, before he became president, uh, he had won victory over uh, a group of Native Americans, uh, the Shawnee, who were led, they had two leaders. One was Tecumseh, who was their military and political leader. The other was his young third brother, Tespatawa. Uh, who was the who was known as the prophet? He was their religious leader. So William Henry Harrison was the um, was a general before being president, and he defeated them at the Battle of Tippecanoe. And legend has it that Tecumseh put a curse on William Henry Harrison that should he ever become president, he would die in office, and every president for the for 20 years, every 20 years from then on, would die in office. William Henry Harrison died in office after catching pneumonia. Lincoln, Garfield, and McKinley were all assassinated. Harding died in office as well, so did Roosevelt, and then finally Kennedy was assassinated as well. And Ronald Reagan, someone tried to assassinate him, but he recovered. And he's said to have broken the curse. Interestingly enough, Lincoln's son, Robert Lincoln, was there for you see how there's three that got assassinated in a row? Lincoln's son Robert was there at all three assassinations. He was meeting his dad at Ford's Theater. Then he was meeting Garfield at the train station. He was uh, one of Garfield's cabinet members. And then he was meeting McKinley at the World's Expo. But enough with that, let's talk about something happy. Let's talk about the presidents who got married in office. Did anyone know, know that some of the, there were presidents who got married while in office? No? So, First of all, James Buchanan was the only president to be a bachelor for life. Hmm. There are three 
presidents who got married in office. The first was John Tyler on the left there. His first wife had died in office, and then later on he met another woman, Julia Garner, and that's her on the left. The, both these pictures on the left. And Julia Gardner and him got married while in office. And because of that, John Tyler has the record for the most children by the president. He had, a, it was either seven by kids by his first wife and eight by the second, or eight by the first and seven by the second. Um, don't remember off the top of my head, but if you do the math, that's 15 altogether. So quite a lot of kids for John Tyler. Grover Cleveland was a bachelor at the time he was elected president, and he married Frances Wilson while he was president. And if you want to learn more about Frances Wilson, who became Frances Cleveland, then make sure to come to our next History Club event when we talk about First Ladies. And our special guest will be Annette Dunlap, who has written a biography of Francis Cleveland. And then finally, Woodrow Wilson, who we can see here. Uh, Woodrow Wilson married Edith Bowling Galt. His first wife, uh, Ellen, had died while, while he was president, and about a year later, he met Edith. And they got married while he was in office. And Edith is sometimes called the first female president because later, late in his presidency, Woodrow Wilson suffered a stroke and was not able to carry out a lot of his presidential duties. And Edith Wilson made a lot of his decisions for him. So some presidential brain power. Franklin Pierce delivered his inaugural address from memory. He had his entire speech memorized. James Garfield had been a professor prior to being president, and James Garfield was ambidextrous, which means he could write with both hands. And he could write in Greek with one hand and Latin in the other at the same time. Uh, this one didn't fit quite as well, but I needed somewhere to put it, is that William Howard Taft did not like being president. He was more into the study of law, and after he was president, he was appointed Chief Justice of the Supreme Court by Warren Harding, and he's the only person to have served in both capacities both as head of our executive branch and our judicial branch. Woodrow Wilson wasn't able to read until he was about nine years old. And most people today believe that he suffered from dyslexia. Um, it wasn't diagnosed at the time, so we can't say for sure, but that's what, uh, that's what it seems to have been. Regardless of that, he went on to become the only president to hold a PhD, and he served as head of a college for becoming president. Herbert Hoover and his wife, Lou Hoover, um, had lived in China prior to him becoming the president. And while in China, they learned to speak Chinese, and they would speak Chinese to each other at parties to prevent people from eavesdropping, from listening in on their conversation. And finally, Harry S. Truman is the most recent of our presidents not to have a college degree. Uh, he never went to college at all. But he had read every book in his hometown library by the time he was 15 years old. So y'all got some catching up to do. There he is reading right there. And for this
this one, I thought we'd have a sort of guessing game. These are some jobs that presidents had before they were presidents. So does anyone want to guess which president was a tailor before he became president? Isn't it James Madison? No. Okay. Does anybody have a guess? Yes. What's your guess? I guess it's Hulk? No. I'm bad at guessing. <laughs> yeah, I have no it idea. Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson uh, did not have any formal schooling, uh, but he learned the trade of being a tailor. In fact, his wife was the one who taught him how to read. And as president, he wore suits that he made himself. What about Shira? Does anyone want to guess? See, this is a picture of a Shira. He looks kind of like the president that went from being a Shira to being the president. Does anyone want to guess? He was one of the presidents to get married while in office. I think you said it, but you didn't say it out loud. What do you think? <laughs> I thought I heard y'all whisper it. But it was Grover Cleveland was the right answer for that. Does anyone want to guess who was a newspaper man before he became uh, president? They used the term newspaper man because he was the owner, the editor, and the publisher. Oh. And a writer. Did everything. Anybody? It was Warren G. Harvey who hmm. had to be convinced to leave his successful newspaper behind to run for Senate before becoming president. Who, does anyone know who was a mining engineer? You know who was a mining engineer? Yeah. Who? Chinese was he was living in China as a mining engineer. What about movie star? Which president was a movie star before he became president? And there's a hint up here. Reagan. That is correct. Ronald Reagan was a movie star before becoming president. And lastly, baseball team owner. Texas Rangers in the early 90s. One of the Bushes. That is correct. Uh, it was was George W. Bush oh. and the Texas Rangers in the early 1990s. Oh. So the presidents who changed their name, the first one is Ulysses Simpson Grant was born Hiram Ulysses Grant. But when he showed up to West Point, they, there was some sort of mistake made where it's, he was down as Ulysses Simpson Grant. Simpson was his mother's maiden name, so that's where that comes from. And he preferred U.S. Grant to having his initials be Hug, so he stuck with it. There are three presidents that dropped their first names. Stephen, do you all know who Stephen was? He did. Was Stephen Grover Cleveland to just Grover Cleveland? Hmm. Thomas, any Thomas, guesses? Thomas Jefferson? Mm, Thomas Jefferson was a president, but Thomas Jefferson kept being Thomas Jefferson. This person dropped the Thomas. Yeah. It was Thomas Woodrow Wilson to just Woodrow Wilson. And 
final job backdrop for the presidency? It went from John Calvin Coolidge to just Calvin Coolidge. Um, does anyone know what the S in Harry S. Truman stands for? S stands for S because after his parents decided on Harry for his first name, they had trouble deciding on the middle name because both they wanted to name his middle name to be after his grandfather, but it, but they couldn't decide which one, and both their, his, his grandfathers had names that started with S, so he became Harry S. Truman. Did you have a question? Yes. What's your question? I think it's a question. So, I, um, how about this Thomas John? Thomas John? I don't know what he meant. Never any president named Thomas John, as far as I know. And there was Thomas John? There was John Adams, and there was Thomas Jefferson. So, D.B. Eisenhower was Eisenhower's initials throughout his life, but he went from being David Dwight Eisenhower to being Dwight David Eisenhower. Since his dad's name was David, and he got tired of people getting him, him mixed up. Uh, two presidents changed their name based off family changes. Uh, Gerald Ford was born Leslie Lynch King Jr., but he was adopted by his stepdad uh, after his mom got remarried. Uh, his parents divorced when he was very, very young. And when he was adopted by his stepdad, he went from Leslie Lynch King Jr. to Gerald Rudolph Ford Jr. And the other one was William Bly. William Jefferson Blythe became William Jefferson Clinton when he was adopted by his stepdad. Also, I didn't include it here because it's a little less formal, but uh, as I understand it, James Earl Carter Jr. has legally changed his legally changed his name to Jimmy at some point. And next up, the topic on the big screen. So we mentioned that Ronald Reagan was a movie star, and we actually have one of his movies right here at the library called Duke Rockley All-American. It's the story of a football coach uh, named Canute Rockley, who was the real life person who was a coach at Notre Dame University. And Ronald Reagan played the star football player George Yip, who died suddenly, unexpectedly. And his last words in the movie are, win just one for the giver. And that became sort of an informal uh, rallying cry for, for people who were fans of Reagan. Another famous movie by Ronald Reagan in, was called Bedtime for Bonzo where he plays a college professor who is trying to prove that nurture is more important than nature. And he does that by trying to train a chimpanzee. He's basically treating a chimpanzee like he would his look, a, a, little, a little child, like he's raising the chimpanzee. And it was a very silly little movie. Uh, I've seen it before. And, uh, you know, it's a fun, fun little kid's movie. Uh, Is it a real chimp? What? Is it a real chimp? Yes. Hmm. You know, Hollywood would train it the most. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, since it was such a silly movie, sometimes his opponents would call him Bonzo as a demeaning nickname. Uh, it's it's sort of just a cute little family friendly silly movie. Um, I had a poster from this movie on my bedroom door 
while I was growing up, and that is Como Road to Ralston, New York. Does anyone know which president is in that movie? Trump. Trump is correct. Uh, he was also in the movie The Little Rascals, as well as, well as a few others before he became president. And we get to the final did you know, and that's did you know Oscar winner William Holden was Ronald Reagan's best man when he married Nancy Davis, who was the first lady, Nancy Reagan. So you can see Ronald Reagan in these pictures here. You can see William Holden, who was a famous Oscar winner, very famous movie star from that era. And these are my citations for the pictures. library when researching this and I also use this one this is my own personal book from when I was a kid and unfortunately you cannot get it through this library at the current moment because uh, only one other library in our system has it and their copy is lost right now but if you want to put in a purchase suggestion to suggest that item Feel free to go ahead. And I also put out Canute Rocky All American. It takes anyone's interest in checking that out. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for coming. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Thank you, Jordan.